and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff, and today I have something special for you. A regular episode of FAQ Monday. Ha ha ha! Not special at all. Kinda. I mean, everything's special, right? Every episode is special. It's really not. First question. Sample rate for recording? Um... It's not that simple. It's not as simple as just going, I'm gonna record at this sample rate. Uh, for the record, I have always done everything at 44.1, not 48, not 192 or anything in between. Um, I know a lot of guys that record at crazy sample rates and then sample down for export and things like that. Here's my take on it. And this is just what I have found personally. So take this with a grain of salt. This is not gospel. I am not a bitrate engineer. I am not a bit, I don't know if those are actually a thing, but I am not a bitrate expert. But here's my take on the sample rate thing. And that is, it's just, it's much more, it's deeper than that. So if you're gonna record at uh, 48K, for example, or 192K, you're not going to hear a huge amount of difference if other things aren't being stepped up as well, namely your converters. Now, if you have really, really top shelf converters, like crazy expensive converters, converting your analog signal to a digital signal, you will definitely hear a, a an improvement if you jacked up your sample rate, because if your converters are really good, why would you want to record at 44.1, for example? But I'm still using a Focusrite Claret 8 Pre, and while its converters are great and they sound wonderful for what I do, I wouldn't consider you know anything, any prosumer gear to have crazy, amazing converters. Now, will that stop me from being creative and putting out a great song? Absolutely not, but will I hear a difference going to a 48K sample rate or 192 sample rate? Nope, because I've tried that and I didn't hear any difference. And besides, as my good friend and boss Joey Sturgis says, you know, iTunes still asks for 44.1 at 16 bit and that's what CDs are still uh, mastered at anyways. And he records everything at 44.1 and he's done just fine with his career at 44.1. So, like many things, it boils down to personal preference, and if you hear a difference, or feel that there is a different feel when you record, by all means, jack up your sample rate. But for me, 44.1 is just uh, where I'm probably gonna stay forever. I've been seeing Solemn Tones' as Odin blasted everywhere in ads lately. It seems kind of cool. Any chance you might get a copy for review? Actually, yes, it will be on the channel soon. Uh, I've been playing with it a little bit. I had never heard of it or seen it before until Andy James posted a clip of something he did in one of, I think it was either the Sturgis Forum on Facebook or a different URM group that I'm a part of that he's in as well. And I was like, wait, this is MIDI? Like, what? And I, I couldn't believe it. So I went out and uh, I got some, uh, so I got it, but I don't have contact. So I'm using contact free, so I have to restart it every 15 minutes but I'm not gonna buy contact, so, cause it's really expensive. But we we definitely will see some Odin uh, plugin. I think you call that a native instrument. Uh, but we will definitely see the Odin MIDI guitar thing uh, very soon on this channel because uh, it's really, really interesting. I see you have some outboard gear, like an 1176 clone, but never really see you using it that much. Is there any outboard gear that is really worth getting in 2017? Um, it's funny that you specifically mentioned the 1176 because it's on right behind me right now. And uh, over the past, I would say I've had it three years now. Uh, if you've ever, if I've ever been speaking to you guys on camera, my Rode NTG2 is going through the 1176. I use it probably more than I use any other single piece of gear besides my actual computer or mouse. Um, I use a an outboard compressor 100% of the time when I'm speaking to you guys, unless there's uh, an audio error or failure or something or the computer glitches up and I have to use the camera audio, um, I am always using the shotgun mic with the 1176 compressor. So it's inter interesting that you mention that, 
But yeah, I definitely think there is still a place without board gear. A lot of people would argue about, you know, oh, you should get the universal audio stuff. It's, you know, it's identical to the hardware and uh, you can have, you know, gazillion instances, the DSP power. And I had some uh, universal audio stuff and I just, it didn't work with my workflow. It just wasn't for me. It sounded amazing, but it just wasn't for me because I didn't use it to its full potential at all. So I like having kind of a hybrid setup when mixing because I like twisting some knobs and hearing that saturation uh, when I send a snare to the 1176 or, uh, you know, use uh, the 1073 Stam mic preamp with uh, a vocal mic and things like that. So outboard gear definitely has its place. I would say selective outboard gear has an even more prevalent space in today's mixing world than it has before. So having a few choice pieces of outboard gear versus just a Chris Lord Algae assortment of gear is definitely the way to go if you're going to go outboard gear at all. Favorite Vans shoes? Okay, so I get crap about my favorite Vans shoes all the time, but they're, they are the all black Vans waves that are Velcro, prison issue, I think they're called, or something like that. But I posted an Instagram photo of me in an airport with the black Velcro shoes and I got made fun of relentlessly for having Velcro shoes, which at the time I was going through a TSA security check several times a month at one point. So I was wearing Velcro shoes, man. And the all black Velcro shoes from Vans are so, so nasty. I just, I love them. So yeah, those are, those are absolutely my, my favorite Vans ever besides the slip-ons. And now Fluff reads a tweet. Clapping is just hitting yourself because you like something. Suggestion My suggestion to you this week is an obvious one. Stranger Things season two is out. And if you've been living under a rock and haven't seen this yet, you need to see it. Now, I'm not completely done with season two, so no spoilers. No spoilers in the comments, please. And I, there will be no spoilers from me. However, Stranger Things is amazing. And if you like sci-fi, 80s retro, horror, I, suspense, thriller kind of stuff, it's just so brilliantly done. And season two is no exception. I'll put the links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.